Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good in our community. And we're honored to be joined by our next guest, Paula Anderson, founder of Writing by Design Media Incorporated. How are you doing, Paula? I am doing well, Jeremy. Thank you for having me today. So let's dive into your world of journalism and media and magazines, all sorts of goodness, but give us a little background on the company and then we'll talk about all these amazing opportunities for internships and more coming up. Well, I started uh, the magazine, which is Memphis Small Business Quarterly, which was in 2017. I was taking a class at the University of Memphis uh, Entrepreneur Media, and it was my individual project. And what I did was I did some research to determine if there was a gap uh, in the industry as it related to publishing positive stories about underrepresented entrepreneurs. And so that's how Memphis Small Business, Business Quarterly became a publication. And so fast forward, I've kind of tested that out to see if it was actually a true business model. And what I did, I actually converted that to a digital magazine, but we do have a hard copy magazine that we publish on an annual basis, which is our anniversary edition. And I developed a hard copy for our entrepreneurs outside of the Memphis area. So I wanted to kind of expand a little bit and cover Murfreesboro, Nashville, and also um, Jackson, Tennessee. So that's what we've been doing over the last year. And you've expanded not only in terms of the footprint, but the kind of the the offering, if you will, in terms of the number of different things that you're doing. So talk about some of the other offerings and the different things that you're doing now. Well, with the magazine uh, development and production, of course, I have to have freelance writers as well as photographers and uh, graphic designers. So I include individuals to work on the actual production. And that has evolved into me actually, actually we are a, a board, I have a board of directors. So I have a, a, uh, an executive secretary, I have a treasurer, and of course I have a vice president. So we're, we're very structured now in terms of how we're operating as a business, but I decided to test out the um, opportunity of using student interns to work on a magazine publication in the fall of last year. And we reached out to the uh, Murfreesboro community and that was our first test of using students to do the production. Uh, so we had a student to be a content writer, which would be for social media platforms. And then we have a student that served as a public relations intern. And so that's kind of what has evolved with me wanting to include students in the production of the magazine so that they can get experience from the classroom perspective, the theory aspect, but actually putting it into practice with the internship. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and carry that forward and then we'll come back to some of the other things. But talk about the internships coming up for the spring semester because you do have a number of opportunities there. Yes. Yeah, so um, I did a fundraising campaign to actually raise some money so that we can have some paid internships. So students that work on photography and graphic design, we're going to offer paid internships for that. Um, but we still have the internships where you can get college credit. So we've been working with students at the University of Memphis uh, over the past few semesters, and they've you know, provided us with some um, some really valuable experience as well as um, some work. So so that's kind of how the internship is going right now. Um, we're seeking interns that's going to be in the Middle Tennessee area for the spring because we're going to be focusing on the Murfreesboro and Nashville area. So that's kind of where our focus is. So if we can get students that are attending school within those cities and major in a journalism or communications program, those would be our ideal students. Talk to the students and the interns, the possible interns in terms of what they would be doing, what that looks like, kind of the, the skill sets that they would be gaining. Talk about some of those experiences. Well, as a journalism major, so I did get my master's degree this, this spring uh, in journalism and strategic media. And journalism is about reading, it's about research, and then making sure that you are writing to your target audience. So if you are a social media intern, then that's going to that's gonna uh, encompass you actually being familiar with some of the platforms that we use to actually reach our target customers. So you have to write content that's going to reach our target customer or reader. 
there. Uh, as far as the public relations, that is really research, making sure that you understand, again, the target audience. I keep going back to that. But our target audience are entrepreneurs. So that's who we want to reach out to in terms of giving them more information about the magazine as well as increasing awareness. And then the photography, which I've kind of added a, a video story uh, component where the photographer would actually do some digital content creation projects. Um, and that would be like interviews and then also just some, some events that may take place. When you look at for yourself as a, a journalist, but also the business owner and, you know, kind of the entrepreneurial side, talk about kind of that blend of knowing the target audience and knowing the journalism side and getting the masters, but then also too trying to run the business. So the business side versus the journalism side, which sometimes can be, you know, a little bit of like, okay, how do we balance the ship a little bit? So talk about kind of those nuances on your end personally. So, so I've had to shift more to being the business owner and that's why I'm actually raising money so that I can fund the business and some of the projects that we're trying to do. So fundraising, of course, has been my role, but I've also had other individuals to come on board. So the board is kind of like to assist me so that certain areas that I'm not really strong in, they can focus on that area. So our vice president, uh, he helps me with a lot of things in terms of like making decisions. So before I actually do anything, then I go to our vice president, which is Eric, uh, to make sure that this is something that we want to do collectively. So that's really been the transition and not trying to be the face of the organization as much um, because I was like taking on a whole lot, you know, being a sole proprietor. But now that I have a board and I'm trying to delegate some of those roles so that I can actually focus on the revenue generation of the business. When you look at some of the major trends and things that have taken place in journalism, and I'm thinking this is great insight for the interns. When you look at the trends and kind of the shifts, what do you see those? And I'm thinking it from the context of where is journalism headed? Where is the business headed? What are those skill sets that are going to be needed? And obviously the digital content creation is a big piece of that, but what are some of those trends that have your attention on the journalism side? Well, I think because we are really shifting from print media, um, I, I believe that print media still does have value because you have a generation that still likes to hold it in their hand. But from a student perspective, um, we need to have more creative uh, individuals. So that's going to tap more into their creativity. So if you can do digital content, you can do videography, you can do photo journalism, then of course, that's going to add more value when you are actually trying to get your very first job. So the creativity aspect of journalism has shifted along with the fact that, you know, it's, it's more of a digital uh, type process. Everything is online, but technology and being able to be creative is going to be, I think that's the future of journalism. Carrying that forward, describe candid conversations with entrepreneurs. I know that's some digital content that you're doing on your end. Well, that is a video conversation with entrepreneurs. Uh, it's not scripted. Um, so you get a sense of what it's like to be an entrepreneur. So starting with the emphasis stages, you know, why did you want to be an entrepreneur? What are some of the challenges that you face? What are some of the successes that you've achieved? And then what, what is some advice that you will offer to individuals that want to get into this, this field? Uh, I did a candid conversation with um, Kenneth Worrells uh, a few weeks ago, and he started, most, most of the stories start out with, you know, I was an entrepreneur at a young age, or I did something at a young age. And so that seed was planted within them. And so as they got older, of course, they began to figure out how can I make my own money? But that's only how the stories go. Uh, and so it's like I said, it's unscripted so that it is a candid conversation. And recently we had a candid conversation about Black entrepreneurship. And the reason for that is because we know that um, African-Americans, that is an underrepresented group within entrepreneurship. And so we had uh, uh, Eric Grinson was our moderator. We had Justin Key, Paula Farmer, Danielle McGee, Carlos Partee, 
and Dom Corey, who are entrepreneurs and also educators or work in the area of development entrepreneurs. And so the conversation was designed to just kind of give more information from their perspective and also what are some things that we need to do moving forward to try to, you know, level the playing field, so to speak. What's one or two takeaways from that event that you thought, hey, these are kind of aha moments that the community really needs to know about? Well, I think one of the key things was that there are like funding resources for entrepreneurs to take advantage of. It's just being able to know what they are and how to tap into that. And then also being able to make sure that you do everything to make sure that your business is structured properly. Uh, during the PPP, of course, a lot of businesses did not get the funding, the initial round of funding, because they were not set up from a financial standpoint. So making sure that your business is operating, even if you're not making a million dollars, but making sure that your business is operating where you have some accounting and you have some things in place so that you can be successful as a business owner. I know you mentioned the Memphis Small Business Quarterly. We talked about candid conversations with entrepreneurs. When you look at emerging and enterprising entrepreneurs, talk about some of the things that you're doing on that level in terms of really kind of widening the scope and getting more communities involved. You mentioned obviously Murfreesboro being a big target, but in the Nashville area, talk about kind of overall what you're looking to accomplish. Well, the the concept of emerging and enterprise entrepreneurs is to not only feature the entrepreneurs, but also to feature the small business resources. So even though you are, you started a business, but what are some things that you need to know so that you can actually be a better entrepreneur? And so that's kind of what we try to do in the magazine. Uh, and, and I do this from the perspective of me being an entre entrepreneur myself. So I'm just learning about this starting in 2017 and making sure that they know that there is a new women's business center for female entrepreneurs in Memphis, mm -hmm. making sure that they are aware of the SBA funding that they can receive that has make it, that may have been given to a local organization. So knowing that there are other resources that they can take advantage of so that they can continue to grow as an entrepreneur. Yeah, and I think that's the, the vantage point that's really important to understand is it's one, celebrating and highlighting the entrepreneurs. But to your point, it's really talking about the resources, the skill sets, you know, how do you build your business, giving them all of those resources and information to continue building their business and because we are a magazine you know we're not tied to any organization so all of our content is objective you know we do do some some vetting to make sure that it is a an opportunity that it is you know that's valid and legitimate but we're objective uh, but we want to support individuals because we know and I know how hard it is and sometimes the information is not always in mainstream media the way that it is in our publication. So, and that's that's why I felt that it was a need for us to actually kind of focus on just a niche with the magazine. Yeah. What are some of your goals when you look at 2022 and beyond for you and your team? What are some of your goals? Well, what I'm really trying to do is to do like a prototype and kind of like see if I can operate this in other cities. So I want to expand the candid conversation where it's more of digital content, because as you stated, you know, traditional journalism is changing. And so I want to be able to cover everybody, but I understand that I can't grow as fast as I would like to grow. So I want to, I do want to test this out in another market uh, to see if it can be duplicated in other cities. Um, I think that Murfreesboro was very receptive to this. Uh, I got a lot of support from the individuals within that, um, that area. And I want to move to another city to see if I can duplicate it. So that's, that's what my goal is. Yeah. Give us some words of encouragement for those who want to become entrepreneurs, who have a dream. What advice would you give them? Well, the advice that I would give them is to first understand what it means to be an entrepreneur. Just obtaining a business license does not guarantee that you are an entrepreneur, but it gives you the, the direction of where you want to go. 
So you have to do a lot of reading. You have to do a lot of research. You have to connect with people. And you do have to understand that it's going to be rough. It's not going to be easy. Uh, I think that there is a certain skill set that you have to have, meaning that you have to have determination when you want to give up then that's the time when you really know whether or not you want to be an entrepreneur and if you can move forward because it's not an easy thing to do. Absolutely. We'll wrap up with website, social media. Where do we go to learn more about Writing by Design Media Incorporated? And also to just looking at the internship opportunities, where do we go to learn more? All right. So our website is our primary real estate. And so it's wbdmedia.com wbdmedia.com so that's our online digital platform our internship tab is on there as well so everything can uh, be accessed to our website Uh, our social media handles we're Memphis Small Business Quarterly on Facebook we're underscore MSBQ underscore on Instagram and we're Emerging Enterprise and Entrepreneurs on Facebook and we have a YouTube channel uh, which is Memphis Small Business Quarterly Yeah. Well, Paula, greatly appreciate everything you and your team are doing. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Jeremy. And I look forward to talking with you again.